Hello, fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your 1 p.m. market update for Monday, the 24th of October. You know, as we're just starting the trading week, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is personal coaching right for you? You have the opportunity to have personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with Market Club. That's right. All you have to do is call the number on the screen, 1-877-219-1482. The call is free, and the consultation is free. So... Hey, do it for yourself. Is it reversal time for the markets? Well, I think that's uh, going to be an important question for a lot of traders this week. And as we start the new week, the question is, have we turned around? Is this just a correction in a bear market? I think you'll find today's video very interesting, as the S&P has made a remarkable recovery. However, it is back at a crucial Fibonacci retracement level, which could present major problems for this index. In our recent survey last week, we asked traders, are they concerned about what's going on in Europe? A remarkable number, over 75% said they were, and they do watch events in Europe very closely. At this point, Europe is really the tail that wags the dog, and we are not optimistic that things are going to work out in Europe in a positive fashion. As, we, as was reported earlier today, there's been a total of 13 summits in a period of just 20 months trying to solve this problem. With the likes of Berlusconi, and some other players on the stage. Can you imagine telling him what to do? And the other players, like Nicholas Sarkozy, shouting to Brian Cameron of Great Britain to shut up and butt out. And that's the stuff we hear about. Imagine the stuff we don't hear about. Now let's go to the charts and see some of those important retracement levels that we discussed earlier and see how we can create and maintain your wealth in 2011. So here we are on my home page. And the market is higher today, which was expected. And we're going to go to the Portfolio Manager. And first of all, we're looking at the S&P 500. Now, the S&P 500 is a plus 70, not a strong uptrend, but still a plus 70. So let's go to the chart. And here you see the chart. And what I want to do, and this is the important thing to look at. I'm going to put our, there's our trade triangles. Monthly, still negative, remember. Weekly, intermediate term trend, positive. So you should either be out of the market right now or you should be basically short if you're a long-term trader. That's if you short the market. So let's put our Fibonacci. So you click on the Fibonacci tool. It shows you a little yellow square right here. It tells you it's active. And then we're going to draw from the very highs right here down to the very lows that we saw in early October. And here we are. We're right up in terms of that 1250 area is right at a 61%, 61.8% Fibonacci retracement. Now, the other thing to look at here, and I'm going to scope this out just a little bit further, is you want to look at this level here. This, these are the lows, very important lows, if you remember, going right here. And as you can sc scroll that along, you can see from our 1258s, so our monthly is short from 1258, which is right here. You can see that was the level right at that point and you can see I think it's important to look at this and see 1250 as so you're back at this level the question is is it going to continue up I think the chances of this market going the other way are quite high but you may want to give the market some room to bear out this is the busiest earnings week uh, reporting week for earnings uh, and we've had some good earnings from uh, so the likes of uh, Caterpillar and so forth but I think you want to watch this market very carefully and not altogether convinced that we're going to go straight up. And as a matter of fact, I think cyclically, we are probably at a high. If you take these highs, how consistent they've been, and sort of project them forward. Let me put my telestrator on here. But as always, we're going to rely on our trade triangle. So let me just show you what we're looking at and give you an idea. If you look at these highs right here, there's a high here, here, here. If you project that further forward, it kind of takes you into the realm of he around here. Let me get that somewhere around here, and then you project that further forward. It takes you around the realm here. So I think we're very close to a cyclic high. You can see the rhythm of this market. It's been doing this. Now, whether this is going to happen again is going to remain to be seen, but the 61% Fibonacci retracement is a very important level. A lot of traders have been looking at the original breakout point we've, we said was on our, Fibonacci, on our 
Trade triangles was 12.58. I think this is a very important level to watch. So I think uh, traders, if you're looking at this stuff, you can be looking at obviously some of the uh, ETFs. You can short this market by going long. Obviously, you know how to do that. Uh, the symbols are in on our blog how to do that. So take a close look at that. So let's take everything off the screen, clear the screen, go to our next market. In the next market is going to be our silver market, which has really had still trapped in this trading range. Uh, we're 65. I think we reported the market was 55 today. But generally speaking, the trend is still negative based on our long-term monthly, even our weekly. If we put that in, you can see that's also negative. And it's never turned around. So we're getting this sort of this triangle here, which normally is a continuation triangle to the downside. Now let me just draw that in for you so you can visually see what we're talking about. So here's the, the sharp move down. We've had this sort of look here. And we're coming to an apex of this triangle. Normally, triangles like this are continuation patterns to the downside. And I think if they look at industrial metals, as uh, silver as an industrial metal, and we see the S&P 500, the equity markets start going south again, then I think we'll see further downside pressure on this market. So uh, again, I think it's overall, it's negative. This is a, as a flag uh, formation. Uh, some call them pennants, I call them, it doesn't matter, but it's a continuation pattern to the downside in my opinion. So let's clear this off the screen and go to our next market. The next market is going to be gold. Gold is a little bit of a different picture. We're plus um, 70, and that doesn't seem to have the same formation. You've got obviously our monthly, weekly, and daily triangles are all positive, indicating that the trend should be going higher. I'm somewhat doubtful based on the negativity of silver. However, that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't be long gold. Um, I think gold did top out right here in the uh, Q3, as we predicted uh, way back last year, cyclically. And we may see some further action, um, but I'm not altogether enthusiastic. Obviously, 1700 is a big level for this market to go over. I'm not altogether sure it's going to do that. Also, if we scope this in really closely, and I want to show you this as well, so just to be aware of this, this these Fibonacci retracements, you can do many Fibonacci retracements. Can't say it, but I can put it on the screen for you. So you take the recent high, which is right here, scope this down to the lows, and you can see right there around 1660 was a Fibonacci retracement. The high today was 1661. The market's currently trading at 1651. So you've had that rally back to retracement, pull back. It remains to be seen where we go from here. So I would be very, very careful being aggressively long this market. I would rather buy it at $2,000 knowing it's going higher than buy it right here not knowing it's what it's going to do for the next few months. So let's go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is going to be the crude oil market. Crude oil markets are acting very well. It's moved over the $90 barrel a level. However, it remains to be seen if it can close over there. That's going to be a big one because the previous high close I think we have is right here. And that was at 90.42. We're currently at 90.58. Uh, I'm somewhat skeptical it's going to do that, but uh, we'll let the market tell us what it wants to do. But obviously, if you just simply draw this on a very wide cloth, you can see, obviously, this is, oh, uh, let's take that off, take that off. You can see this is basically a, just a just high high level resistance right around these levels. And you can say you've, be, you've really just been in a very broad trading range. So I would be a little bit skeptical. I want to see how this market closes today. Certainly a close under 90 would be very suspect in my opinion. And certainly a close under this recent high, I think was, what did we say, 90, uh, here it is, 90. 42. I think that will also potentially be a, a potential double top in that market. So let's clear the screen again. Go to our next market. In the next market we're looking at is going to be the dollar index. And the dollar index, in my opinion, is probably a great buy right here. And I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, if you look at back, uh, you've got obviously two, you have two red triangles. Longer term, uh, the green triangle is positive, saying so the longer term trend is there. But if you go back to this level right here, is this level right here. And also, if you go back even further, uh, 76, 
was the original buy point in 7661 is a long-term trade triangle. So you can, if you wanted to be a long-term trader, you could buy this market right now at 7613, um, indicating the market should be going up. In my opinion, again, this is this is this is really kind of we talked about this before many times. This is now support because remember it was resistance at 76. This was resistance. So that turns into support. So 76 should be good support. You've obviously pulled back quite a ways from the 80 level, which we were targeting. We got the 79.90, I think, or 79.85. We pull back. Uh, I think the next move in this market is probably going to be on the upside. But let me just clear this off the screen and show you something else that we're looking at. And if we go down here, you can see the market's very, very oversold. And I think we'll probably see a pop on the upside there. So let's go to our next market. The next market we are going to be looking at, as always, is going to be the Reuters Jeffries CRB index, uh, which is actually performing very well. However, that's going to track oil, crude oil, very, very closely. And it has today, obviously, crude oil up, CRB index up. But it's not making new highs. Unlike crude oil, which is making new highs, this index is not making new highs. I would be very, very concerned here. You've got a couple of things happening. You've got our long-term negative monthly trade trends, short-term up, long-term, excuse me, sh very short-term up, intermediate-term up also. So it's sort of kind of mixed, but you should be out of the market if you're an intermediate-term trader or a, even a long-term trader, unless you're a long-term position trader. But even if we put a um, Fibonacci tool in here, you can see that we're very, very close, uh, certainly to the 50% level. We could possibly pop up to 323, which would be a 61%. These levels I mentioned are very, very important. These aren't just something we pull out of the hat. A lot of professional traders, particularly professional, has look at these levels, and that's the levels they want to decide to sell or go short markets. So pay a close attention to them. They are important. I think you'll find them very, very useful in your own trading. But again, um, I appreciate the opportunity to share these ideas with you, and hopefully we'll be... Uh, doing a lot more tomorrow. Some of the bank stocks are very, very strong today, as the K SKF, which you've talked about that before, was under pressure. But it looks to me like we could potentially be turning around in those, just like we could be potentially turning around in the S&P 500. Again, if we go to the S&P 500, you can see it's off its best levels of the day. The best levels we traded as high as 54, 1254. We're currently trading right around the 1250, 1251 level. So it remains to be seen if it closes up here, what's to do. But generally speaking, we're in a Fibonacci resistance area. It looks like a breakout, no question about it. However, our long-term triangles, we're going to rely on those to help us with the long-term trend. If we're right cyclically, then this market should, in fact, begin to turn around a rollover. And like, whoop, it should, in fact, roll over and challenge these lows again. So I think, obviously, Europe Wednesday is a big day there. November 3rd is another big day in Europe. Every day it seems to be a big day and nothing happens. I think the Europeans just cannot get their act together. I think uh, these politicians really want to keep their job, and they know they have to make decisions that are incredibly difficult. And uh, generally speaking, they always, always defer, defer, defer. Hey, Adam Hewison from Market Club. Thanks for stopping by. Have a successful trading day. I'll be back tomorrow, 1 o'clock, same time, same place. So please tune in.